All right, Mr. Khalid, we are back at Timepiece 360 for your next auction. Welcome back. Thank you, thank you. What do you have for us today? So this is auction number 21. It's actually our one year anniversary for the auction. Uh -huh. uh, we've had this auction running for one year now. Um, we have over 70 watches in the auction. So what we have here are six highlights from Rolex. Nice. One more than last time. <laughs> no, That's great. Just, so then let us get right into it and show us the first watch, which is a highlight of the current auction from the Rolex lineup. All right, so highlights. Ooh, that's too, too difficult to say highlights <laughs> because they're all highlights, but let's start off with these two and I'll do them in pairs. Okay, um, cool. Because One. actually they're from the same family. Yes, yes. So these are two submariners. Okay. Uh, two different generations. Mm -hmm. um, but again, the beauty of Rolex is they keep their look and feel. Yes. What I have on my right, is the Rolex Submariner Kermit. Oh. And what I have on my left is the black Rolex Submariner. Okay. This one is two this one is 2019, so it's with the ceramic bezel. Uh -huh. The one on my right is the Kermit, so it's pre-ceramic, so it's the aluminium bezel. Yes, yes. Uh, as a lot of people know, the Kermit was introduced as a 50th uh, anniversary edition for the Submariner. Mm -hmm. I think they stopped it. I can't remember when they stopped it. I think it was in 2011 when they introduced the yep. Hulk. Okay. So this is becoming more and more of a collector's piece now. Mm -hmm. um, over time, they become more difficult to find. Yep. Um, and with becoming more difficult to find, you get more, more and more people interested. Yep. Yep. So uh, we have this one in the auction for 39,000 dirhams. Mm -hmm. um, no papers on this one, otherwise it would be a lot more. But still, great, great, great uh, value for money and a highly sought after watch, which we don't really see too often nowadays. Yeah. Do, uh, uh, one question, Khalid. Mm -hmm. Do you think uh, people care a lot for these kind of watches about the box and the papers or is it becoming less important? Look, it's subjective, let's say, yeah. right? Uh, I think a lot of people have held papers into account more than they should mm -hmm. because they deem it as authentication of the watch. Yep. Really, authentication of the watch comes from the watch itself. Yes. So if you're looking to authenticate a watch, it's not through the papers, it's through the physical watch. Mm -hmm. But as a watch becomes discontinued, from a collectability perspective, the fuller the set is, the more value it retains. Yes, right? yes. Like cars, for example, if a car has a full service history, mm -hmm. it becomes easier to sell uh, than a car that doesn't. Same okay. thing with watches, uh, and their value will change. The more important a watch is, yep. the more it gets if it's a full set with papers and everything. Oh, okay, cool. This one is an example from 2019. It's yes. a full set, starting in the auction for 37,000 dirhams, wow. which you're looking at $10,000, huh. which is great value for a, a, a full set. And as you know, they've changed this recently from a 40 yes. to a 41 millimeters. So this is actually now discontinued too. Price will go up over time again with mm -hmm. this watch slowly. Okay. So two great pieces. Cool. One is a collectible, one is a future collectible piece. Nice, so what else do we have? So uh, what else do we have? All right, let's do this one quickly. So, yes. Um, classic Rolex Datejust. So mm -hmm. this is a classic steel Rolex Datejust fluted bezel uh, jubilee bracelet yep what makes this watch you can't say special uh is the dial mm -hmm. uh they don't make this dial anymore it's not really a it is a pink dial but it's not really a pink dial it's a very i don't know if the camera will do it justice but it's a very soft color yes yes, uh, yes so again i think you know you can pull this off if you're female and you can pull this off if you're male mm -hmm. if you're a man's man you can still pull off a color like this uh, I like the dial. I think it's a very unique and cool looking dial and it really sets the watch off. So again, this is a full set. This is actually an unworn watch. Mm -hmm. This is from 2017, uh, full set. And then I think it's in the auction for 25,900 dirhams. So again, below retail price, uh, you're getting a watch. I think it's unworn or mint condition, yep. but it's a full set watch, mm -hmm. unique dial. Very so nice. Great, great watch for someone who's looking to get into Rolex. Great, next. Next one is the Explorer. Um, this is a bit of a, I don't know if you call it Marmite watch. Mm -hmm. Never really hyped with some of the other steel sports watches for different reasons. One of them being the size. This is yep. a 36 millimeter watch. 36 is not everyone's cup of tea, but it's mm -hmm. still liked by a lot of people. This example is an unworn 2023 uh, Rolex Explorer. 
Um, again, in the auction for 25,000, 25,900, so slightly below retail price. Wow. With the buyer's premium, it takes it to retail price. Mm. Again, uh, in the auction, it's available today. Yeah. No waiting list, no nothing. So it's a great watch for someone who's looking to get into Rolex. Great first entry watch. Or a great watch for someone who wants a smaller size watch, which is mm -hmm. 36 millimeters. Yeah, I think they introduce it now in 40, 40. millimeters. Yeah. So what are your thoughts? Many people are saying now the 36 is the woman's explorer and the 40 is the man's explorer. No. Do you agree or? I don't know. As you know, with watches, they've, they've been trending lower, smaller in size. Mm -hmm. So we've seen a lot of watches uh, going down in size. You know, case in point is the Tudor, right? Yes, yes. The Tudor Black Bay, the 54, mm -hmm. is once the size. Uh, 37 millimeters. 37, right? Yes. Uh, but it's still being, you know, it's, oh, it's a lot of awesome, interest. awesome watch. You have one? Yeah, yeah, I just bought it recently. Yeah, and, and what do you think? Amazing. Absolutely love Not it. Not too and small? No, 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 definitely. And if I would say my opinion, I think the 36 Explorer is better than the 40 by far. But the perfect choice is, of course, the 39. Yeah, and the 39 they had and they discontinued. Yes, right? correct, correct. And, and for me, I think they discontinued because of the lack of demand on it. Mm. So it'd be interesting to see the 40 as a replacement for the 39. Yeah. Interesting to see how it performs. But this is a watch which some people will like, some people will think it's too small. Yes. Personal choice, but it's still a great choice. Change the band, put it on a rubber uh, or a NATO strap. Fantastic watch. Cool, great. So then, next piece. Two more to go. The back girl. Wow. <laughs> right. So no introduction needed. Everyone yes. knows this watch. Um, talked about a lot, hyped a lot, gone up, come down, uh, swings and roundabouts with this watch. But it's always going to be a watch in demand. It's come back mm -hmm. down to interesting price points now. Yes. This an example is an unworn 2023 watch um, in the auction at, I believe, yeah, 59,000 dirhams in the auction, mm -hmm. which is a great starting price with the buyer's premium. Still above retail, yep. but it's come down a lot compared to where it was in exactly. some of the discussions a few months ago. Yep. My thought always with these watches, regardless of where the price is today, if it's a watch you want, you should buy it. Long term, these watches will always go up in value. Mm. You shouldn't be buying watches to make money from them, but yes. you should be buying watches to keep. Correct. These watches will retain value if you keep them for about three years. So up or down a few thousand dirhams, it doesn't matter. If you're looking to keep this watch, a lot of people like it. Yes. If you do, it's a great watch. Cool. Perfect. And the last piece. <laughs> Ta -da -da! <laughs> Daytona. No auction without a Daytona. There is no auction without a Daytona. Um, again, the Daytona. It's very long. It's okay. But, <laughs> good. All right. Now let's start with the Daytona. The Daytona. Yes. Again, another watch. No introduction needed. Off the steel sports model, this trades at the biggest premium. Yes. Has, yes. Look, um, always has traded at a premium. Um, it's come down a lot, a lot mm. again. Um, look, this example is a box and papers, excellent condition, pre-owned. Mm. Uh, 2016. So actually, this is probably the first year when the Daytona was first launched. Yep. Hasn't changed much, mm -hmm. uh, except for this year, they've introduced a newer model. Mm -hmm. Still very much look and feel the same, subtle differences. This in the auction is going for 79,000 dirhams. Oh, okay. So, I think from my recollection, this is the lowest price I've seen a Rolex Ceramic Daytona for a long time. Yes. Uh, yes. But to be fair, I haven't seen a 2016 for a long time. I, I mean, how much is the retail now? Maybe 59, 58,000, yeah. something like that? Yeah, late 50s. Yeah. So not too, you're not too far off from, mm -hmm. from, from retail, bearing in mind where they were before. Yes, uh, yes. Don't forget there's a buy premium to add on to this. Correct. Th there'll be bids on this watch, I'm sure. Yeah. How many bids, I don't know. But it's a great watch. Um, yeah. It's a, a keeper for those. I have the Daytona. I, I always wear this one, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Just because it's such a great watch to wear. Yeah. 40 millimeters light on the wrist. Very versatile. Um, it's a beautiful watch. Cool. If, um, yeah, I think what better way than to top off a Rolex review than with a Daytona. Exactly. So out of all the watches you showed us, which would be your pick again? Personally? Yes, your personal favorite. 
Ah, uh, the Kermit. It's Kermit. I, I, have, yes. I have, I love watches. I love, Ro I love recently discontinued Rolexes. Yep. Um, I think there's a lot of value in them still. Mm -hmm. if, if I'm talking purely value. Yes. I think you can still pick them up for good prices. Correct. Uh, I think there's a lot of value left in them. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and they're great watches. Yeah. Um, I like the fact that they're, they're, they're not, it's not vintage, mm -hmm. but it's not mm -hmm. new. Yes. Uh, it has different names, mm -hmm. um, but for me, um, I think they're great watches. I love the green and the black on this. The Hulk sometimes can be overbearing the green. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. this has the, just the right level of green on it. Yep. Um, and it's a, it's going to be a great collectible in the long term. Amazing. And, and, and you can pick them up at great prices still. Exactly. Relatively speaking, still a lot of money yep. uh, we're talking about, but I'm comparing it to this. Right, there's still yes. a big price gap. It's like less than half the price, yeah, exactly. it's a starting, starting. Which one would you pick is the question. <laughs> to be honest, Raleigh, you already took my pick. Uh, so I would I would also go for the Kermit. What's your second pick? Uh, my second pick would be... I mean, the Kermit would be a bit of a collector's pick, and especially considering the starting bit is so low, uh, even though it is without papers, as you said, but... I mean, I guess the condition would matter more. And if you find this one at a great condition for that price, amazing. So let's say I would be a watch watch beginner. Then I would take the Explorer 36, which is at the starting price of below the retail price. And I think with an Explorer, you can never go wrong. It's a perfect daily watch for whatever you want to do. And yeah. So Have you had one? Of course, <laughs> I even have two. <laughs> you have two, <laughs> so the Explorer would be my pick. Perfect. Yes. Cool. Great. Then thank you, Khalid. And we continue with the second video for the six non-Rolex watches. The exciting ones. Thank you. Bye-bye.